What's up guys, I'm Miguel DSM and this is the story of my 1999 Mitsubishi Eclipse GSX. I got into cars was at a very very young age I can remember myself collecting a lot of Hot Wheels collecting a lot of die cast toys and uh, I remember back in elementary school my parents got me this Nintendo GameCube for Christmas one year I found myself coming home from school every day and playing uh, Need for Speed Underground, Need for Speed Underground 2, Need for Speed Most Wanted, and Need for Speed Carbon and I just found myself just modifying cars as my hobby it was the one thing that has always caught my attention and i knew since a very young age that this is something that i wanted to do as i got older and i had the funds to do it so fast forward a couple years and one day like i don't know where my dad comes home with a 2ga silver mitsubishi eclipse a gsx and uh i love that car yeah I, I, I still remember my parents would always tell me like oh yeah we used to get a lot of speeding tickets in that thing it's just it was a very quick car right so uh unfortunately my dad did end up selling it he actually made me the promise to give it to me as my first car um and he ended up trading it in for a toyota corolla four-door uh, because we're a family and uh, that's understandable but it, it really did break my heart i remember crying the day he told me that he did it and uh I, I told myself, you know, internally that I was going to own one as my first project car. So, uh, towards the end of senior year in high school, in second semester, uh, me and my dad went to go look at this very special silver Mitsubishi Eclipse. It was a non-turbo, but at the time I didn't care because I really didn't know how to work on cars and uh, I just didn't really know what I was getting myself into, right? So I didn't really know there was any differences between the non-turbo and the turbo models. And now looking back, I really did take for granted the elementary school days playing video games, you know, every day as a hobby with no responsibilities or even having my first car and my first job and, and you know, starting to modify my first project car is just something that I feel like nobody forgets. And this is the car that's kind of stamped me in a way that's, that no other car has been able to do ever. So uh, no matter where I go in life, I always tell everyone, uh, this is the one car that I feel like represents me best. And it's the one car that's always gonna be my favorite no matter what, you know, cars in my garage. So I don't ever see myself letting go of it unless I got a really, really good offer that I just couldn't resist. But even then I feel like I would regret it for the rest of my life. And that is something that I've recognized with a lot of DSM owners. If they, they told me like, hey, I ended up selling it off just because of you know my current life circumstance and I couldn't afford anymore or I had to you know fund another car, or I had to fund my family, I had to fund my business. Uh, but they always want to get another one down the road when they have access to one or they just always admire one when they see one, right? So uh, it's just kind of funny to see that, you know, this car does hit a lot of nostalgia for a lot of people. And I truly do believe this is going to be one of those cars that's just going to be forever iconic. You know, it came out in the Fast and the Furious. It was in the OG Need for Speed Underground games. And it's just a very popular car amongst the tuner communities. So between the first and second year of ownership with this car, I remember spending all my paychecks on this car. I would buy, you know, things on eBay like Plasti Dip or Yellow Fog Light Tint or Strut Bars and Intakes. And I didn't really know how to work on cars, right? And this car never really gave me too many issues. I think it just, uh, the slave gave away at one point which I had to tow to a mechanic because I didn't know how to fix it and a radiator that I had to have a fellow DSM buddy come out and help me change it and now looking back you know those are very easy tasks but you know when you start out you don't really know how to work on cars and if you don't have anyone in your life that kind of guided you into this type of lifestyle I can see why it could become very difficult to you know get into right and now that I look back I didn't really have too much taste as far as modifying cars right so I feel like I found my style as far as how I how I modify my cars now and that's just the OEM plus look uh, but looking back I had the windshield banner I had the plastic Classic dipped wheels I had just had you know stuff that wasn't really proper per se right but I feel like that's how you learn this was the one car that I've gone through I want to say like over six or seven stages it's I've had canards I've had front splitters I've had different sets of wheels I have different sets of coilovers I have you know different sets of performance parts and it's just a car that has taught me pretty much I want to say like 80 percent of what I know today and uh, I do think that the DSM platform is a great car that could teach you 
how to work on cars or how to become a mechanic for yourself because it's a car that's very uh, you have to be very mechanically inclined just to keep running or just to be able to restore to a solid point right i found myself just starting to go out to car meets and you know meeting the other dsmers out here in socal and for the most part you know half were cool but the other half wouldn't really talk to me um just due to, i guess due to age and you know, there was the older DSMers that really, you know, they thought they were too good for the young kids. So I, I kind of get their perspective now looking back at the newer kids with DSMs, but you know, you got to start somewhere and I respect that. So um, I did have the turbo guys, the 4G63 guys, the GST and GSX guys that would talk crap on this car, right? So I had RPF1s on it. I had Brembo brakes from an Evo on this thing. And it was a non-turbo car that only made 140 horsepower, right? So um, I did get mocked a lot in the, in the Facebook groups out here in SoCal. And not looking back like I, it is what it is but back then I was very naive and I did feel some type of way about it right so I, I did build up some resentment towards those people and uh, as time progressed I decided to basically Evo swap the car right so an Evo swap is something that hasn't really been done on a Mitsubishi Eclipse or Eagle Talon for the most part uh, it was an urban legend back when I found out about it it was all over the forums and there was like two or three cars that had done it and I had no business doing this, right? But luckily I did have a couple DSM buddies, which were to me very mechanically skilled. And I looked up to them because they just knew how to work on these cars like without even thinking about it, right? So I always had to like analyze, look, try to work on it, struggle, you know, take a break, then come back to it. I'm just like, all right, what did I do wrong? How could I do this better? And over time, I've realized that my mechanical ability has gotten better, but it's a skill in itself that you have to keep on practicing just to, you know, get better. Yeah, I was very lucky to have the friends that I had in that moment. And uh, they decided to join me on the mission to uh, put an Evo 8 4G63 on a non-turbo Eclipse. You know, it's never been documented. It's no one's really ever done it. And it wasn't an easy task looking back. It took me a total of like three years and this was just me obsessing over the fact that i had to finish it and i had to go through with the build right so there was many roadblocks along the way that could have stopped me uh but you know i didn't really have any other sense of purpose or mission in life at the point and all i cared about was cars and all i cared about was you know getting this car to run and eventually hit the streets again <laughs> give a shout out to my fellow DSM buddies that have helped me with the Evo swap over time, right? Like Lazy and Carlos were pretty much there for 80% of the swap and the all wheel drive conversion, which came after, right? So we saw it as a goal. We saw it as a dream that uh, not many have really you know, got into and it, we took on the challenge and we made it work, right? So I ended up Evo swapping it with a front wheel drive setup initially. And uh, this thing, even without a proper tune, was just torque steering all over the road. And uh, it, I just, I found myself not really wanting to drive it anymore because I felt like I had invested too much money into it. And I was scared for someone to hit this car, for something to happen to it or for something to break. So I found myself storing it in a garage for like another year or so. I ended up graduating college and I decided to start filming YouTube. You know, I was tired of the front wheel drive setup. I'm like, you know what, why don't we take it apart in the garage and all wheel drive swap it and make it a full, you know, all wheel drive Evo swap car. And we tune it and we, you know, go the full nine yards, right? So I hit up Lazy and Carlos and I was like, hey, like, are you guys down? And a shout out to them because they've always been down just down for me like they've always been willing to help and no matter the circumstance like they were always there for me and if it wasn't for them I don't think I would have been able to get this far without them so I remember back in the day like they would just go over every weekend and we started taking the car apart again without us knowing what was going to happen so of course we started tackling everything I started documenting everything on YouTube and uh, slowly but surely people started noticing it and starting to you know fall along for the journey and, and, and started to you know really motivate me as far as support goes right because when I was initially Evo swapping this thing with a front wheel drive uh, no one was really there to see it besides me and my friends so just having the online support of people you know telling me giving me advice or telling me what parts to get or what you know a possible idea to fix the current robot we were in is what really kind of got got me through that so um, we did encounter a lot of roadblocks along the way you know we had to get a custom drive shaft custom axles like it was just a this thing was a complete guinea pig right and we kept failing and failing and failing until this car started to run properly and then of course i ended up getting it tuned on e85 and it made a 440 wheel and 413 torque too which i still remember the night that I drove this thing home after the tuning session because it took us like five hours over at Road Race Engineering with Sam. That first 
first pull felt so amazing. It felt like the fastest car in the world to me because I've never really experienced a, you know, decently quick car like that. And it's just like seeing the car go that fast after all this time, it just really felt like all the work and effort and money and blood and tears that went into this build kind of finally paid off, right? And uh, I really found myself just enjoying this car a lot more. What ended up happening was I ended up storing it again i just kind of didn't want to take it out anymore the car sits too low i kept breaking front lips i kept breaking parts on it and i kind of just kind of got over it as i got a little bit older and it, to me the car is just too valuable to really take out and just kind of risk someone hitting me or you know something happening uh, because at one point in time it did catch on fire due to a short in the wiring harness so i think it happens to a lot of car guys or a lot of car girls it's just there, there's certain cars that you definitely get attached to no matter what happens and this is the one car that has been with me for the past decade or so so you definitely do build some sort of bond between man and machine and it's something that i feel like only as a car enthusiast you can truly understand right because you have your people that don't really care about cars or don't really understand or hobby or passion but as a fellow enthusiast i think you are able to kind of identify when someone has a very strong attachment to their car just due to the experiences due to the people they've met the friendships they've made the achievements they've been able to do with a car right the changes the modifications i used to be super embarrassed about what people would think about me back in high school right because i was the one kid with the eclipse that was super passionate about it but for the most part i just kept it to myself and that was because i really didn't know if it was i, I just I, I didn't feel accepted for the most part right so after I realized and I kind of found myself and just kind of started really, you know, embracing what I love is kind of when I just started to, you know, just said, screw it. And, you know, I'm, I'm gonna build my cars. I'm gonna do what I want. I'm gonna do this YouTube channel and I'm gonna put myself out there. And, and it's kind of gotten me, you know, to where I'm at now. And I'm very grateful for that. And uh, for anyone on here that, you know, either has an Eclipse or has any type of car that, you know, and, and you love it, it's okay. Don't be scared to put it out there on the internet for people to see. Don't be scared to, you know, you know, embrace your passion, share with everybody who cares what they think. You know, everyone's gonna have a hobby or a passion and it's normal, it's it's human-like, it's it's a human thing and it's a great experience to have. Huge shout out to the DSM community out here repping for the Mitsu boys and girls. Uh, I do wanna go over just a quick model list for you guys, for anyone interested in what I have. So for exterior, I do have a front lip. I do have a yellow fog light tint that has been on the car since like 2013. For the side, I have the Carbonetics carbon fiber extensions and I do have have the Volk TE37 and Volk lug nuts with Federal RSR Pro tires. As far as the back goes, I do have the carbon fiber rear lip, the carbon fiber rear centerpiece. I do have the rear high rise carbon fiber spoiler with the Carbonetics carbon fiber extension. I also do have the EDM tail lights. And as far as a braking and suspension goes, I do have some Evo 8 Brembo brakes with some StopTech rotors and I also have a set of Reaction USA coilovers. As far as interior goes, I do have a set of Brad Lomax seats, the Takata harnesses, the Auto Power roll bar, and the black leather interior, the Nardi steering wheel with the DSM horn button, an AEM CD5 dash, a Pioneer double dent stereo, and some OEM Mitsubishi floor mats. As far as engine bay mods go, I do have the Evo 8 4G6, three stock internals, HKS cams, tubular manifold, Evo 7 valve cover, O2 dump, three inch downpipe, motor mounts all around, Evo 9 turbo, speed density intake, aftermarket radiator, punishment racing or CX racing front mount intercooler with some custom intercooler piping and vibrant clamps, the OG Grady Type S blow valve, which is the same blow valve that's in the Fast and the Furious. I also have a fuel lab pressure regulator and an AEM 340 fuel pump and fuel filter. I have the DC Sports front and rear strut bar and an AEM standalone ECU tuned over at road race. And of course, like I said, it made 440 wheel. So yeah, for the most part, the car just sits now. I do take it out every once in a while. It's just the car that I get to enjoy. Uh, you know, pretty much off camera and just kind of to myself for the most part now, just because, uh, you know, it's got to be here and uh, I'm, I'm excited for other platforms and other projects as well. So a uh, huge shout out to my DSM homies and my DSM people out there watching this and my Mitsubishi people because uh, this is my favorite brand. And uh, I know we're like, kind of like, we don't really fit in with the rest of the community, but we're very strong and we, and, you know, especially when we stand together. So if you guys want to check out building a Mitsubishi Eclipse, I think in 22 minutes, I'm gonna go ahead and link it right here. Otherwise, go ahead and subscribe for more videos and Mitsubishi contents. Otherwise, I appreciate you guys watching and uh, hope you enjoyed the rest of your day. Have a good one.